Hey, this is Syax, and today I'm showing off the long overdue tutorial on my uh, long delay timer, but I've actually come up with a slightly improved version of the timer to do the tutorial on. It incorporates a second glass ring on top of the first, which significantly increases the amount of delay that can be achieved with this timer. So I'll show you how long it takes for the trigger block to make the last jump to turn off the device. Uh, right now it's in its fastest possible configuration uh, and it takes approximately seven minutes to make a full loop. You can see it's been running for uh, maybe 15 seconds now and it finally made that last jump in that fastest possible configuration. Uh, so on to the tutorial. Alright, uh, next I thought I'd show off a visual representation of the materials required for this project. So you can see them all laid out here in rows of 10. Uh, let's take a look at the exact numbers. So first is 56 of your favorite redstone conducting block. Uh, here we're using stone. Next is 36 glass or any other transparent block that can be moved by pistons that does not conduct a redstone signal. Next is 8 obsidian or any other block that cannot be pushed by a piston. Uh, so that could be a furnace. Next is 12 pistons and then one sticky piston, 15 repeaters, 22 redstone torches, and 23 redstone dust. I happen to have all those materials on my bar right now laid out in the same order. Well I apologize for one of the most hideous things you'll ever see in Minecraft but uh, I laid out this hole in the ground to show the layout you'll need if you want to uh, conceal this timer entirely under the ground uh, I laid out the different layers in complementary colors so they'd show up well. Um, try to get some good angles at the whole thing. And the black wool is just showing uh, the input line. So where that repeater is in the bottom is uh, the input to turn the device on. Here's step one. Go over to the rainbow hole in the ground and lay the bottom layer out. So we lay down these stone bricks, being careful to leave a 4x4, four four, not a 4x4, four four, a 2x2 two two hole in the middle. Uh, that's where these torches go. And then we lay out the repeaters. Uh, notice there's a block missing here. Um, that's where the block uh, comes in and out on the sticky piston to turn on the timer and turn it off again. So the repeater above the torch faces out, the next one faces in, out and in, and you just repeat that around the edge. And then you put a piece of dust attaching uh, all the repeaters together once again leaving one off there here's what step two looks like uh, it adds quite a lot on so I might be back and forth a couple times to refer to it uh, the first thing we'll do is add these pistons on down there and the two blocks above them so one piston goes in each of these gaps here and then the blocks go above and you want to place one directly above the piston and then one above the repeater going into that same piston and just repeat that around the edge and then on top of these blocks you want one redstone torch directly above each piston and then you need one repeater 
facing away from the torch uh, next to each torch and then the next thing we're going to put on is the first ring so this gap and this uh, block here can go anywhere around the ring it makes no difference uh, so we'll just start that off here you can start beside any of the repeaters and just make sure each side is six blocks long we'll leave our gap there place our block and whoops continue the ring around until it's connected with just the one gap and that's step two here's a look at step three it adds on three things uh, the first is the pistons that power that first row or the first the first ring here uh, the second thing it adds is the blocks of obsidian to keep the uh, rings from being pushed out of place and the third thing it adds is uh, these blocks that um, power these pistons on the first ring so let's go add that on so we need to come off of there with a block and we have dust going into it and the piston sits above that block and then we have obsidian beside it there we just continue that pattern around the outside so block block the dust and piston there obsidian there whoops two blocks dust piston and obsidian and once more two blocks one dust and piston and the obsidian so that's what uh, that step completed looks like the next step once again adds on quite a bit more it adds on the second ring of glass uh, the second set of pistons, the second set of obsidian, and also the means of powering the second set of pistons, which uh, happens with this dust uh, and this torch and this torch. So first thing we'll do is add on uh, the power method here. So diagonally down from each piece of obsidian we need a block with dust on it. you can tell where this has to go based on where the power coming through the glass is so add that make sure you don't cut the wire there put a piece of dust there and uh, when power gets through there it will turn this torch off you need obsidian on top of that and a torch beside it and then that torch will power this piston here so we'll go around and add that to each side a little bit harder to control while frapsing get a little bit of lag we'll add on obsidian and torch and, uh, yeah sorry that was right block, dust, torch, obsidian, and torch, block, dust, torch, obsidian, and torch, and then each piston goes directly above uh, the other one, one block up, there, there, and that one's in already and then we'll just add the next glass ring directly above the other one one block up and by one block up I mean a one block gap between them so this ring looks exactly the same as the one below we'll just have our block there so that's uh, that was step four 
Okay, the fifth and final step adds all the control circuitry onto the side here. So the first thing we'll do is add uh, this pass through here and the monostable circuit. So we'll go do that. All right, so you need two blocks here, torch there, a repeater there. Uh, and then we need one more block on the outside with a repeater to make sure that this piston is not affected by this. One block there. And then, yeah, the monostable circuit has this torch here. And then we get this uh, two by two square. Um, dust like so. Peter there set to well it can be set to two or three or you know last setting works and torch there and that's the monostable circuit uh, the next thing we need is the RS nor latch that turns the device on and off so what we need is this uh, shape there we come uh, off of this torch so we have one block there one block there one block there um, torch underneath dust on top and torch on the side and then we have this block here which is what turns it on and off uh, the whole device that is put uh, some dust on top of there and then last is the piston and it's circuitry that turns the whole thing on and off so we come off this torch under here and create that okay so come off of there oops we need one block dust on top of it torch and then sticky piston the one sticky piston and then a block and the whole thing should be operational now that's it we'll see if it works oh of course it won't work because we forgot the one last important step a block down there to rotate around and it's it's defaulted to turned on but it will turn off when uh, this block gets over here. We can speed that process up a bit. Uh, we'll remove remove uh, up to two glass from each of the two rings and replace that block with glass and put this block over here instead. And we'll see uh, if it turns off when that gets around. We'll just take a minute here. There, it turned itself off. There is my completed uh, super long delay timer. And, you know, I, I honestly don't know how long it can uh, be configured to go for. It's at least several hours. Um, I'm sure there's a way mathematically to figure out uh, how much time adjusting the repeaters down in the bottom adds and and all that sort of thing, but um, that's not really my area of expertise. So thanks for watching, and uh, please leave your comments. Thank you.